Good evening. We're going to call to order the Committee of the Whole meeting and special voting meeting for Daniel Voon Area School District. Today is Monday, May 13th, 730 p.m. Uh, we'll start with our Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we are going to begin with the special voting meeting. Um, Mr. Wolf, could you roll call, please? Yes, Mr. Scott. Ms. Albright? Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Dursa? Mr. Strobel? Here. Mr. B. Scott? Here. Mr. Wolf? Here. Mr. Rathbun? Here. Ms. Olson? Here. Mr. Scott. Here. <clears throat> Seven of the ten. All right. Are there any agenda edits uh, for the special voting meeting this evening? All right. No. Uh, procedures for public participation are on the inside cover of your uh, agenda. If you would like to address the board on any topics, just put, approach the, the, the uh, microphone and state your name and address. And you'll have three minutes to address the board. Thank you. Um, first item on the agenda, or actually I'll start with any presentations by public on any agenda topics in the special voting meeting this evening. Seeing none, do we have a motion for item 7A? I'll make a motion. Mrs. Olson, do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Rathgat. Any board discussion? Mr. Strobel, are you sure? This is on number seven. Item 7A, the only item one here. Seven A. Um, the not to exceed 3.198, what exactly does that equate to in terms of an increase? Is it 0.5? Is it 0.75? Is it 3.2? I don't know. So it's what, point, point 0.91 plus the exceptions? Last year, what did we, what, last year what did we, we went half of what the allowable was. Mm -hmm. And so what does that equate to in terms of? So the max, without exceptions, I think is 0 0.91. Yeah. Is that correct? So it's 0 0.91 plus the exceptions that we've applied for. So, we're and right. that's, so today we're saying the max plus exceptions. Correct. We're not to exceed that. To exceed and, that. And, and it's not, we're not voting... That is not our final answer. That is a, we have the flexibility to go at least at, at, at that high. Okay. So if we leave the exceptions off the table, then we can't go higher in a future meeting. We, you could, you're only passing this budget to advertise for 30 days. Anything could change between now and when you actually vote on it up or down. Which would be well, less than 30 days from now, would it not? Right, you can't go above this now. I think, but I think our next, is it, would it be less than 30 days from? Well, the voting meeting is going to be next, this is, for today is the 13th. So the June one would be what? Okay, so we've got it. Yeah. So that's when you have to make your final. Any we, other? Already, yep. we already had zero increase, and then an increase is brought out in, in, in uh, June, so can't go either way. Just can't go above the 31 number. Okay. Any other discussion? Questions? <clears throat> Roll call vote. Yes, Mr. Scott. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Strobel? Yes. Mr. B. Scott? Yes. Mr. Wolf? Yes. Mr. Rathbun? Yes. Ms. Olson? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. All right. Any presentations by public on any issues? <clears throat> we have a motion to adjourn the special voting meeting. So moved. Second. All right. We'll call to order the committee of the whole meeting. Um, we'll we'll skip the pledge of allegiance, but we will have a roll call. Mr. Wolf. Mr. 
Ms. Albury? Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Gerson? Mr. Strobel? Here. Mr. Scott. Here. Mr. Wolf here. Mr. Rackett? Present. Ms. Olson? Here. Mr. Jeff Scott? Here. Seven lieutenants? All right, thank you. Uh, once again, procedures for public dissertation are in the back of the uh, cover of the agenda. And if you have any questions or think anything you want to say to the board, simply come up to the, the microphone. You'll have three minutes after stating your name and address. Um, any agenda edits? Any agenda edits from board members? Seeing none, uh, there will be an executive session following the meeting to discuss personnel and legal issues. Uh, and next up, we'll have a presentation by Nutrition Inc. Let's see if use this. My name is Jim Morrissey, and I'm the regional manager with Nutrition. And with me tonight is Alonzo Price. He's the food service director here at Danny Bain School District. And we just wanted to give you a little update on how 2018-19 has been going in the cafeterias around the district. So I wanted to start here with just going over some of the numbers. Uh, in the left-hand column there, you see what we budgeted per day for meals this year. And those budgets are based on what we were doing around March of last year when we were creating <coughs> this year's budget. Uh, the middle column is year to date. So as you can see, all the categories are above budget pretty considerably. Um, over 100 and almost 160 lunches, uh, seven breakfasts per day, and $35 an hour cart sales per day. Um, we're finishing strong. The column all the way, way to the right is April actual, and Alonzo has been building those participation <coughs> numbers throughout the year. Uh, so those are even higher than what we're doing uh, year to date. Uh, down at the bottom, we guaranteed a profit of $686 to the district. Uh, through April, we're already at $30,000, and we did $12,000 just in the month of April. Usually May and June with field trips and uh, seniors graduating and half days and things like that, we don't see as large an amount towards the end of uh, May and, and June, but you should still see over $30,000 on the bottom line for the end of the year, which is a great turnaround for the program. We've been here, this will be our fifth year, uh, next school year, and when we came in, there was uh, large negative numbers being uh, on the bottom line every year. We've been able in five years to really turn that around, and uh, during our five years, even in the years where we weren't able to meet a uh, break even, we have met our guarantee with the district and came with the check and, and made that right that you haven't lost money on the, the cafeteria program here while Nutrition Inc. has been here. So. I talked about the numbers, but Lunds is the one here every day making it work, so we have some pictures here just of some things he did throughout the year to be innovative and get the kids excited to eat breakfast and lunch. Yeah, we're going to go over a few of the programs that we instituted here. The first one on the far left is our Tasty Bites, and that is a uh, snack that we sell at all levels in the school district, um, and it still meets the school requirement, so it's a healthy drink, whole fruit, different things like that. But we dress it up either with icing or with whipped cream or something like that, and the students really take care of that. Um, the second one is our farm to pork, pork, which is our middle one. And that's an eight-week program where we get local produce between Berks County and Lancaster County. And we have different uh, vegetable or fruit each week, whether it be apples, oranges, spinach, or something like that. And at the end of that eight weeks is usually our um, harvest feast, which is our Thanksgiving meal that we do in all schools uh, throughout the school district. Um, the third picture there on the far right, um, the uh, Blazer Nation um, was kind enough to invite us to their uh, Food Truck Fridays. So we participated in that um, throughout the school year. And we utilized a food fusion program there which blends two different types of food into one. So that was a waffle cone um, breakfast omelet. <coughs> breakfast omelet and a waffle cone that we served out there that the kids seemed to enjoy. Also in the middle picture you see uh, the square white plate. That's something we started uh, last year and moved into this year. And they're display plates that are on each of the lines. When the students come up, they see uh, what's 
gonna, what their uh, meal is going to look like for that day. Instead of the food just being in the pan down through glass that they're looking through, they might have steam on it. It's right up front and center for uh, the kids to see, which has, I believe, been a real positive for lots of people to tend to eat with their eyes and, and uh, like to see what they're going to be having that day. Um, the next slide talks about a bistro box, which we introduced to the high school level. Um, and it's a great way to sort of capitalize on some of the different products that you can see, whether you're at a Wawa, whether you're at Sheets, uh, whether you're at a uh, Starbucks. So that's a combination of different proteins that the students can get. They could add a fruit or a vegetable to that as well. Um, the middle picture is our, one of our best breakfast promotions, which is our uh, breakfast with aliens. Um, as we know that once kids eat a breakfast <coughs> and combine that with a lunch, it's a great way for them to um, keep their attention span throughout the day and not go around hungry. I know some students like to skip breakfast, but at that younger level, we really try to encourage them to participate in the breakfast. And then our last slide there is our recipe of the month, which is macaroni and cheese. I know that it's some, um, when we went to school back in the day, a lot of the things were frozen and we just heated it up. But at least once a week in all of our schools, we have a fresh made meal that we serve to the kids every week. Another thing to mention with those bistro boxes is it's something that we're looking to reach those students that aren't necessarily coming to our lines now to get a traditional school meal. So we're trying to reach as much of the population, give them as many options as we can with that. So moving on to next year, um, my slide here just highlights our guarantee for next school year. So it's a $33,000 positive guarantee. Uh, one key to this is that there's no price increase for the school meals. We haven't had a price increase since after the 15-16 school year. There's a 10 cent price increase, so over our, our five years we'll have that one uh, 10 cent price increase. That was actually part of the state mandate to raise prices 10 cents until you reached a certain level that they deemed the lunches should be at. Um, they're still mandating that. They're still making us fill out the price equity calculator. We filled it out this year. They think our Meals should average $2.99. They're actually averaging uh, $2.65. So they want us to raise 10 cents a year until we would close that 30 cent gap. And the, the target would keep moving up every year. But they, last year and this year, allowed a waiver if the cafeteria fund had a positive balance as of December 31st. You didn't have to use the results of the calculator, but you could hold your prices where they were. So we've done that the last two years. The year before that, we utilized non-federal funds to close that gap and not raise prices. <coughs> is that, is that a, that's a price per meal? Yes. Yeah. It's a blended average, so <coughs> price for the elementary lunch, price for the secondary lunch, and then they make you blend that average and compare it. Just lunch, though? Just lunch, right. Okay. Yeah, so you, the lunches here are $2.60 in the elementary and $2.75 in the middle school and high school level. And then the breakfast price hasn't changed. It's been dollar ten for close to eight years now. And that's all I have, but we're here and willing to answer any questions you have or talk about anything else in the cafeteria. Yeah. Well, a couple of questions for you. So um, uh, I know we had, some, we had issues back in the summer with the, with the, with the walk-in and you know, all that stuff. So, and you know, I know, I know Casey is not here. Um, do we have contracts um, that come in to service the equipment, refrigeration, <coughs> make sure the uh, you know our our our, our dishwasher are you know proper, proper chemicals, proper temperature. That, that's something? all done through DCA. Okay, so that'd be a, a case of uh, uh, um, the other question, and I don't know the answer to this, unless you should know, maybe ask Kathy, but uh, I noticed that. You know, we've always renewed for, for one year. Mm -hmm. And you guys have been here for five, I think you're doing a good job. I mean, can we renew for more than one year? <coughs> it's a state contract, you have to do it one year. We have to do it one year at a time, but next year we are. Because it seems like a lot of work to keep I doing know. that every year. We know. It's required every five years. <coughs> to so next year, um, you said, me, if you're standing here, you'll have a number of companies come off of your buildings and then put in a sealed bid. And, you get to review the bids at that point. It's not necessarily a little bit bitter. There's an evaluation criteria that you can take into account a number of things and hopefully have us back for another five years. You know, we'll continue to build five a year contract with one year at time. Time. Thank you. Yeah, you have to renew it each year. The state requires looking at the contract on an annual basis. See, see, you have to kill a forest every year to. Uh, yeah, you should see the contract we have to sign. It's uh, more yeah. than a mortgage. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I think that if you've attended any of our meetings, uh, and Alonzo has, uh, 
and the contractors that, that we have that haven't performed well, they really hurt it. And I think it's only fair that, in contrast, you guys have proven to be a very good strategic partner. Um, they've been innovative, to say the least, in trying to work with the uh, taste guidelines. You're driven down from the federal level. I think you've really done a good job with uh, helping our students. And uh, I know that Brand uh, Brand's over there kind of shaking her head. So um, I think you guys really done a good job. And I think it should be uh, noted that you know, we really do appreciate it. Thank you. That's a lot to hear day in and day out. He puts up with our jokes about his uh, bakery box. <laughs> Thank you. Blue man. Thanks again. move on to items under finance. The ever-present uh, replacement of doors. One of the questions that came up in when we were doing the agenda, I think, was H uh, and I. We had asked if they were um, consistent with what we've done in the past. And I think. Yeah, actually, looking at this, I think this is the first time we actually got it right off the off the, off off the, the first track here. Yeah. So finally, the only time I can't tell you how many years, but I, I I thought that would make you happy. Yeah. <laughs> we eventually get it right. <clears throat> Any board questions or discussion on any items that number? I was waiting for you to ask this question. One thing I did want to mention, we, we covered it during the agenda meeting, was Q, the River Rock space. Of, that does include the space that they're in, and the space, at least uh, with partially, that they use on, you know, throughout the building for different functions. Is that a true statement? Is Yes, the, uh, the agreement does include um, the use of some additional room locations up on the second floor for testing purposes around uh, PSSA and Keystone at the same time. So the, the, uh, while we're on queue, that uh, looks like the utilities were, uh, were, were adjusted in there. Um, and so we're, we're not seeking an increase for next year. We're going to go with what we... Uh, had this year, and then the increases would be for the years two through five on that contract, right? Correct. Yeah, one one thing to note with the agenda too, we um, I had asked the, that we indicate which items had been put through facility uh, through committee before coming to the board. So you you should see notes on anything that's already gone through committee. Um, anything that's not, you can assume, has not been run through committee. Um, so I'm, good, I'm happy to see a good ch portion of these have already been reviewed with committee before coming here, which is great. So um, I'm, I'm assuming, uh, from what I read, or at least from what I deduced from items um, about the, the uh, yearbooks, uh, PTC paid the advisor, but in actuality, it's in the contract that should be paid by the district. So we're now reimbursing. Is that what I'm gathering? That is correct. Um, I have a question about item, um, and maybe uh, Mr. Schrobel was going to address it. Uh, but uh, T, the uh, Department of Technology Group. Is that in the, from the technology committee or? I think that inside the existing budget, we already presented 
Well, what, uh, well, I guess my question was, what, what's that? What's front line doing for us? Yeah. Pardon? What's front line doing for us? I didn't bring my technology notes, so I'm going to defer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's three different um, modules, essentially, all around um, really our employees. Uh, the first one is for tracking our employee professional development, as well as reporting it up to the state. Uh, so that's a product called My Learning Plan, so it's formerly known as um, that's, uh, we can have our own professional development catalog. It also works with uh, other intermediate units uh, and any other locations that will track any courses, um, any seminars that our teachers track, and then uh, Act 48 credits. Uh, we typically had to gather that information manually. This system does it automatically for us, sends it up to the state so uh, our employees receive the necessary credits um, for that time. The other component uh, is an employee evaluation uh, component for both our professional staff um, and our support staff, uh, in uh, terms of the professional staff, it's replacing an existing product uh, within the district, which is called PA ETEP, uh, but it allows our uh, administrators to go through the classroom, perform walkthroughs, do the formal observation, um, and do that formal documentation, and also uh, support uh, Dr. Cooper and uh, Dr. Sincerefino with the new differentiated supervision plan, um, the necessary documents there. Um, and the, Final component is a digital learning component that ties in um, to that evaluative component. So as a uh, administrator goes into a classroom, uh, there may be an area of weakness or an area of growth uh, that they can assign a short video for the faculty member to review. Um, and it also checks off uh, some of our mandatory trainings that we have to do for things like suicide awareness, um, child abuse, and, and that sort of thing. And that also uh, is a uh, replacement of an existing product in the district, um, say schools. Uh, so it's pulling in a number of different resources under one roof for us. Uh, we also believe there uh, could be some potential for cost savings, especially on the Act 48 front, uh, that faculty members could go in and take approved courses utilizing existing uh, district resources rather than uh, for us paying to go outside the district or things of that nature. So, so that's going it, to it, um, show us what uh, Act 48 grants are available like the IU or Yep, correct. You can link up with any um, other customer's catalog. So every IU surrounding us uh, attached to us is a, a member of my learning plan. Uh, so we'll be able to link directly into their catalogs. Well, are the teachers going to be re requesting classes through that system? Or no, it just tracks what they, what they take and what they pass? They can do both. They can do both. Uh, there is a um, custom <coughs> form area that we can do normal course um, requests and that sort of thing, or if they signed up at another IU, it reports back to us so that we don't have to uh, track that information down. And then, and then so the, the piece that uh, like Mr. Spores to go in and do his, you know, test room, uh, is that is actually going to be able to do it on his iPad or whatever? Yep, or, and then, okay, so. yep that's correct. Yep. So do the, the, the teachers, this, is it one of those deals where they should look here first before going outside? Or are they going to get some type of training or awareness so that they know that this is where we should be? Yeah, we'll absolutely do some PD. The, uh, as far as the digital courses they have available, there's about seven to 800. So absolutely, that would be a first stop to um, check it out. I, mean, anyone I just mean, are we going to make sure they're aware of that? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That they should be using this versus Correct. Yeah, the, it'll you know, be legacy resource. channels. Yeah, it'll be a resource and then just through the evaluation process, they'll have to use it. So there'll be two levels okay. of engagement, you know, part of our daily operations and then a supplemental support piece as well. And is this, the, the 26,000 is, you know, an estimated annual cost and the 14 is in addition to that for one, one time only? Correct. And then, Mr. Maslow, we're, we're on, I guess the uh, iPad for, you know, D and, and U, that's for the most of No, that's just our normal. Uh, uh, yeah, this is our first year going with the uh, equipment lease route. So that's just our normal um, equipment purchases there for um, standard replacement. Next so this, this is for the ninth grade coming in? This is just, this is for anywhere, classroom computers. Um, the iPads themselves are for Monopsy Elementary, their classroom iPads that okay. have in use. Um, so this is just a general, um, not tied to necessarily specific um, initiative. Next year you'll see the iPads for the middle school. Thank you. I have a question on Kale, and then I assume that the council has advised that we set the settlements, pre settlements that are in the attachments. Yeah, that's correct.
other questions on item six? Any public comment on any items in finance? Seeing none, we'll move on to uh, item seven, programs. Anybody have a concern about Mr. Strobel? <laughs> I have some concerns, but I'll, I'll hold off until everyone else has a chance to it's speak. It's a great experience. You love it. You don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Which you didn't know. Are, are you allowed to make jokes during these meetings? <laughs> <laughs> I can. No, during graduation. <laughs> All right. I'm the youngest member. How can that happen? Um, Is this the... Uh, age, by the way. Is this the first time we're, we're uh, the Westchester's um, coming into uh, a student teaching group with us? Or we have to be, I know we always, we always do the Albrights and the uh, Castans and more local schools, but. No, that, that is, that's a repeat. Is We've repeat? had those okay. in the past, yeah. Okay. Did you actually get, get kids from the Castans? Yeah. Okay. yeah. From Westchester? I mean, from Westchester, yeah. yeah. Yeah, seems like a main grief you're trying to do, uh, you're trying to do fields, so it seems like a long drive for those kids if they're living down there. Yeah. What if they're from Bingham? Could be. Well, actually, if you're, if you're from Bingham, you can't, you can't go into the district at your... I don't know. Yeah, you can't do that. Any, uh, any other board comment on item seven? <clears throat> Seeing none, any public comment on item seven programs? All right. Moving along to presentations by board members. Um, Mr. Wolf. I have no secretary correspondence to discuss. All right. Uh, BCIU. Uh, thank you, Mr. Scott. Um, so at the IU, we, uh, I don't believe we participated in this, but the IU did go out to uh, secure uh, joint purchasing for uh, medical and nursing supplies. I don't believe we were part of that big work capital. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we also, the IU also uses uh, Sweet Stevens Cats Williams. We have uh, also agreed to um, re up their contract for next year, um, as well as our other uh, solicitor, uh, that's our regular one, Rubak Mancuso and Begley. Uh, I should point out to uh, uh, Mr. Super that they're cheaper, but no, I, won't, I, won't, I won't go there. Um, and we also did approve a lot of uh, PA key stuff, uh, which um, I, won't, I won't get into too much, but uh, PA keys are kind of interesting. Uh, that, that's a couple hour discussion, I think, if you want to get into that. But uh, anyway, um, and I, I don't know if everybody realizes the, uh, the IU does. Uh, I'm sure uh, administration realizes the IU keeps track of a lot of what's happening up at the uh, state. Uh, one thing that I found interesting that I'm sure uh, uh, Mr. Knight is aware of um, is this uh, assistance uh, with AP placement test costs. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. So, um, from what I read here, um, that uh, PDE will pay $33 towards the $85 cost for each exam. Uh, and the college board uh, is agreeing to a $32 fee reduction for students qualifying. Um, so that actually does pay 20 bucks. Yeah, that's great. More than five, that's, that's half. Super, so I like that. So uh, hopefully we get some kids that maybe had some financial concerns about the way. Super, okay. Uh, what should I add, Mr. Scott? Thank you, Mr. Rathkett. Uh, BCT? Yes, Mr. Scott. Um, we did meet at the West Center on April 24th. Um, the notable item um, was that uh, the bids were opened uh, for the major uh, um, disciplines for <coughs> construction of the welding building. So uh, part of that was to understand the numbers where it was in the budget. The, the numbers came in a little bit above what the budget was, but in the environment that we're in right now, construction-wise, uh, I mean, it was still pretty good. It was still very close. So we did uh, award the 
you know, major things, electrical, you know, site work, all that stuff, uh, to be, have this, the project start. So um, that was the, the big thing, is, and as, as well as many people probably know, uh, this is the, they're celebrating the 50th uh, anniversary of the creation of the Career and Techno the Technology Centers. And uh, it's been a month long celebration uh, for different things and recognitions. Uh, they had, Dr. Cooper and I both attended the uh, May 1st brunch at the West Center. Uh, they had a lot of speakers there. You know, a lot of the, the politicians came in or sent the representatives that they couldn't be there. Um, some past administrators, uh, a lot of, a lot of test, personal testimonials and how the uh, origins of the you know, Career Tech Center uh, was and how it came to be. So it was actually, um, you know, very, very, uh, very worthwhile. I was happy to be a part of it. So uh, um, that kind of wraps up. Miss um, Albright uh, forgot to mention to her that her husband <coughs> did not win the uh, Rosner. Um, so I didn't win the Corvette for the uh, for the uh, uh, drawing either. So just kind of a letdown there. But anyway, um, the next meeting will be you know, the twenty, I believe the twenty second of this uh, of this month in the East Center. Anyone got any questions? Thank you, Mr. Wolf. Our student government report. So we have our student government uh, president here, Ms. Juliette Leone, and then I'd like to also introduce for next year our uh, president-elect, uh, Ms. Sever Ms. Sarah Sanjali. <laughs> I'd also like to thank uh, the staff member that's here, who wants to remain nameless but is wearing a pink shirt sitting over on that side. He's done a lot of work with us uh, in the administration side to put together a student government that is um, flushed out and is definitely what the kids are going to see if they go to serve the public in a government uh, structure. So, So thank you all for allowing me to speak tonight. Basically, uh, as the year is coming down to an end and everything, we're just finishing everything out, like we just had our campaign in which Sarah Zamichelli was elected as the president for her senior year. And some of the other main things that have been going on at the high school have been the Spring Spirit Week done through student government. And now we don't always do a spring pep rally, so this was a nice addition with a few of the other events that we've had planned throughout the year. This was a great one to wrap up, especially my three years as an officer. And the blood drive we recently had, which had amazing numbers of people coming out and giving back to the community, which is a great thing that ties the high school together. The fine arts students have have also been recognized very frequently, which we have at the pep rallies, and there's also the art show going on currently, which there's a lot of recognition through that. And finally, I'd like to thank Mr. McKnight, Mr. Flanagan, and Mr. Spores. You have all done so much, and especially you, Mr. McKnight, you have been such a driving factor in what you have helped us do and helped us to become over the past few years. So thank you all so much. Thank you. For your service. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our student board representative report. Anything for us? No. Um, not much. Um, I will mention that the AP research students, um, even though our exam is over, we started doing the service projects. So we came together and each class picked one of the topics that a student wrote about to do a service project. So the third period, class is going to be doing a donation drive for safe perks for women and children um, through domestic violence. So we'll be collecting flip-flops and generally used clothing, shampoo, all that types of stuff at the high school to then go and donate to safe perks. Um, so just keep that in mind. All right. Thank you. Uh, anyone legislative report? Yeah, Mr. Durst is not here. Okay. Any other reports? Uh, by board members. Ms. Olson, anything? You had an other report last time, so I want to make sure. I did. All right, any uh, public comments on board <coughs> presentations? Okay, uh, moving on to item number nine, uh, personnel. Any board discussion? I have a question. So, uh, yeah, just looking and, and kind of making a, uh, 
at some of the dates under B, um, can I assume that perhaps a couple of the unpaid leaves of absences was because we had Sunday makeups? What the game is like that? So I see a couple like April, I think April 24th and 3rd were snow day makeups. Yes, no, maybe? I don't, I'm not sure. I mean, I'd have to check those dates and if that's some information I can get back to you. If you yeah, I know without you've had the conversation before about these, yeah. about the, the, that issue with then people taking, you know, either they have some scheduled or whatnot and then they try to take a personal day and all of those are already used up or there's none available because the teachers, the teachers are at the max. So, you know, again, it's kind of curious. Mr. Chair, if I could just interrupt for a quick second. Um, the, uh, the 21st was, um, was Easter, 22nd was a day off, 23rd and 24th, I believe, there were that Tuesday and Wednesday and I believe we're supposed to be at school then. I wasn't sure, that's why I was asking. I, was, I, I believe it was. Sure it was, or was. Yeah. I think the 22nd was. Right. It was the week, it was the week before the, the um, was it the 17th and the 18th, I believe, that we lost at school. Mm -hmm. No, they took away, they took money, the 22nd. Oh, okay. the 22nd was, was. We didn't there. lose Thursday. Okay. So, so the 23rd, 24th were, 23rd, 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 were regular days. Were that was, all, yeah. yeah, they were yeah, all planned to be. Okay, that, that was my question. So then that's fine. Okay. <coughs> so why was it sure about? So I was wrong, but thank you. Oh, you're, 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 <laughs> so we were both wrong. <laughs> any other questions on any items? By board members on personnel. Can I just ask a, just a general one? No. No? <laughs> Why are the soccer coaches all leaving at the same time? I just, they're both gone. Something happened with soccer? Just by, just by chance? I just have to just, I, I don't Just a resignation. Yeah, it may just be a coincidence, but it's just gonna. No other questions from board members on item number nine? Going once. All right, any public comment? Oh. Um, so 9C, that will be filled in, I'm assuming, by the time you The security officers? CMB. Assistant C principal. C1A and B. <coughs> yes, okay. those names will be on there oh, for yeah. the voting meeting. All right. Any any other comments from board members on item number nine? Any public comment on item number nine? <coughs> Seeing none. Uh, enrollment. Any board comment on enrollment? <coughs> any public comment on enrollment? All right. Uh, curriculum and instruction. It is. All right. Um, so we just had a meeting two hours ago, and um, um, we got to um, hear about the PAYS survey <coughs> presentation from Mr. Knight and Dr. Cooper. Um, PAYS is a PA youth survey. Um, it is a program um, that surveys students in <coughs> 6th, 8th, 10th, and 12th, um, statewide, um, it's confidential, um, it, we don't participate right now, um, there are almost 500 schools in the, school, in the, in the state that currently participate, we've participated in the past, um, it, um, they ask questions about um, health and wellness, um, where our students are with a, a, a really broad range of um, personal subjects um, having to do with um, um, the culture in the school, you know, um, you're going to have to help me with some of this part. There's some mental health questions, drug, alcohol, tobacco. Right. Um, 
they're antisocial uh, behaviors and, and activities bullying. and bullying. Right. Yes. And so um, we're thinking about bringing this back um, into the school, um, and um, it is that it not only helps statewide, we can also make use of that the information we get if we took part um, at the school level. Also, there are um, there are there's funding through grants. Um, if we identify something through taking a survey um, that we need, that we need um, to um, target um, the needs of our students, we there is money that's available, but only if you take part in phase. So um, that would be something that would open up to us if we did take part. Um, like I said, we used to have it. We don't need more. Um, the the committee. Um, um, kind of asked if we could just, we're going to get a little bit more information, like some of the sample questions, maybe look at some of the statewide information that's provided in the different grades. Uh, the recommendation from the administration was that we either um, do this at the 8th grade, 10th grade, and 12th grade, or do all four grades. Um, and so we are going to take a look at some of the um, um, some of the next, a little bit more background information, and then we'll vote on whether or not to kick it back up to the rest of the board in June. And do we know why we said that? Oh, memory serves correctly. I'm sorry. We think this, what you're about to say was discussed, but none of the, us who sat are on the board were part of the board it at is. that time, so if you'd like to say it. My memory, you know, it's, it's definitely not what, not what it used to be, uh, but. Uh, I believe there were a couple of board members that were concerned about uh, student privacy um, uh, and, and information that's gathered on our students these days. And the, the ability today of technology companies to um, take supposedly anonymous information and at some point, you know, pinpoint that and say, okay, well, this, this was actually coming from this person, et cetera. Um, you know, I know it's supposed to be anonymous, um, but that they're, 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 the concerns of a, a couple of board members in the past were that they, they really didn't think that these, and it is, it is very personal questions. Right. Uh, they, they, their feeling was that uh, they didn't want our students' information used in that, in that capacity. So. And, and the current members of the, of the uh, CNI committee um, may view it a little differently, but how we were going to, after talking with Mr. Hurley and bringing that historical um, aspect to our conversation, um, we, we decided that since we are going to have this conversation further in curriculum instruction in June, we are going to make sure that it is put out there to the public that if you want your voice heard before we decide to kick it up to the full board, that they, they should come to that Monday's meeting in June and if, um, you know, we'll, we'll hear everybody out. Um, we also discussed two, um, we got updates on um, two different um, things that they're doing at the high school, um, the multi-tiered system of support, um, where they are with that, we, they, he, um, Mr. McKnight had given us a presentation on that um, a couple of months ago, and um, he just gave us an update where they were with it, um, and then another update on where we are with um, the eight. TSI, the addition, additional targeted support and improvement, all of that um, toward um, helping our both our special needs students and others <coughs> that may be falling through cracks in either one or more discipline at the high school. And um, once this we we lock it down and have a successful system for dealing with that, um, we're thinking we'll be bringing it back first to the middle school and then through to K through Um Talked about the comprehensive planning meeting. The next meeting is um, May 20th. Um, Dr. Sincere Payne reminded us that we had all received an invitation to come if we would like. It's a, it's a Monday, 8 to 3 30. Um, the plan is to have the fully formed plan to the um, Pennsylvania Department of Education by the end of October, which would mean that we would have a first look to the board. Uh, the draft in June and the final board approval before October, so either in the August or September 
<clears throat> time frame because we need to have that that draft out for 30 days before it can be voted on before it can be voted on for the public to look and comment. Um, talk to, about the virtual academy. Um, we're talk, we're in talks with a company that um, Edgenuity, is that correct? Um, that um, we might be able to have a full formed virtual academy with this if it works out with this company um, by September of 2020, so a year from now, a year a year's school year from now, I guess. And um, um, it's still very much in the, the the infant stage of talks. So there wasn't a lot. There's not a lot I want to bring to everybody about that at this point. Um, talk about full day kindergarten. Um, when we had had our full day kindergarten presentation for the talk, right now we have two full day classes for at risk kids that are identified that need that. We had it two months ago at that meeting. Um, the question was asked, do we need to have more than two classes? And so the, the answer that we've received from the administration is, at this point, their recommendation is that we have two more classes for one year. And during this year, what would make sense would be to take a look and compare kids that may have may have benefited from full day to the ones that are in the classroom and see if in the 2020-2021 school year we maybe would be recommending three kindergarten classes at full day instead of just two. So was that like the kids that were kind of on the cusp or were quit in the class and they just didn't have enough right. spaces? So yeah, so kind of, kind of got a good sample group there, kind of see if they would have, yeah. Right, because comparing, comparing the, the, the thought process being that comparing kids that are, are ready for, you know, ready for kindergarten and, and are doing just fine with just a half day, comparing those to, to no, the whole yeah, so, group. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it might be giving, you know, they just, we just want the answer to who we need to expand. Yeah. Not, but we but we are recommending that we continue it as it as it is for the for the current school year. Um, uh, we have a list that um, should probably be a, an addendum to the voting meeting. Is that next week? Um, for under ten classes, there are one, two, three, four, five, six under ten classes. They're all um, classes that are. One of them, French, French four honors. It's just, it's a senior class. It's not required, um, but those are kids that are really, you know, willing to go to that level of going into like that fourth year of French. Um, that's just a little under ten. All the rest of them are either AP classes or a part of a pathway. That if they, we don't offer that class to those kids, they won't be able to get that pathway on their, on their. Uh, I, I just want to know, did, did Mrs. Weber have to come back? Yeah, no. Assist, assist any, any of the class? Yeah, I hear, it's, I hear Mrs. Schwartz has a handle. That's, that's what I was told. So. Um, I'm gonna have her. I'll have her call you personally. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then the I last thing the cell phone. is that we are still trying to get, um, there's a program that, um, a very popular, well-known program through the ABL that um, is called, it's called No Place for Hate, and we've been trying to bring that into our schools for a while. We're still on a waiting list. We won't be able to get it in the next year. Um, so we're currently maybe looking for other avenues, not for the students, but at least um, some, some uh, training on um, um, so in some of the same um, diversity and tolerance, um, you know, um, areas of concern for the uh, for the adults at the at, at in the school district, at least for now, until we can get that program that's for the whole school district. But you know, finances being what they are, it's gonna it's they're still working. So is it fair to say then, for the voting meeting next week, we'll have uh, an item on there f regarding the full day kindergarten? Yes, that's that's the plan. That that was our recommendation. That it's what what do we have in the budget now? I'm told is to hold it steady at two funding for two full day classes, and 
out of the C9, <clears throat> out of the CNI committee, we are recommending that at least for the next year, that's where it should stay. <clears throat> So I don't know if you need to have another. No, I think we had to vote to continue it because it was originally a, so, so a three-year effort. So, so the so the recommendation from the administration was to yes to continue it for another year, and to you know just say for two for two classes because it might be more in future years. It would be our recommendation. So we we were only recommending two classes for one year. All right. That makes sense. Yep. I have a question about the survey. Yep. Um, so is this kind of, is this like would students still be given the option to take it? Or is it kind of like an all or nothing thing where like if we do participate, all the students have to participate? Or are they given the option? And no, kids are given the option to opt out. Um, there, I'm, I'm assuming there is a point of diminishing returns where if enough kids opt out, the, the, the information loses value. Um, but but there was, in the past when we've taken part, you can opt out and that it'll still be that way. <clears throat> so I'm assuming it's some kind of like aggregator service where you can get comparative data to schools like you, schools in your area, schools. Is that, is that right? Fair? There um, and I can. I don't remember the name of the website. The website name was shared during the presentation. Is it just pays stuff? Thank you. Um, and that's where we were going to go to look for some sample questions because the questions asked for sixth graders are going to be different in some in some ways. Some of them will be the same, but some of the questions will be different for sixth graders versus twelfth graders. It'll be different. So. I'm just saying it's not just a report like here's your kids. It's right. it's a I, you can get comparative data across various give, lines. Yeah, it'll give statewide data. It will give uh, just county. district data, countywide data, so they have um, a lot of different aggregate points. Okay. Don't share. And like you said, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes maybe there is a district that's in your county or in probably not Potter County, but you know, some, somewhere, somewhere else that's similar to you, um, even if like your next door neighbors aren't, um, or are a little different. Yeah, I mean, like P PSBA did that whole report and had, you know, breakdowns by the size of the districts and. Um, and, you get um, social economic uh, you know, factors and things of that nature. And Mr. Mr. McKnight will um, share the, the website for the, for the there's some information that we won't be able to see unless <clears throat> our school is part of the, right. you know, is, is, is part, of, part of the group. You yeah. know, but, but, there, but there is information that you can drill down on a little bit um, just as a just as a citizen of the, of the state, of the Commonwealth. I assume on the opt-out, you can opt-out in individual questions as well, if you're not comfortable answering. <clears throat> I, I'd say that. You can choose not to answer individual questions. Yes. That's my understanding. There's, right. There's that, that's part of the process, too. And I'll, I'll have um, some information, more additional information, and Friday update on um, places you can go to access some of the questions and stuff. And to be honest, I mean, that, that kind of information probably helps the people that design the survey. You know, if you have overall 40% of the people don't want to answer your question, maybe you need to rephrase. Mm -hmm. you, know? <laughs> you know? All right. And that's it. Any uh, questions from Ms. Olson? Any public comment on that uh, curriculum and instruction? All right. Extracurricular? Uh, well, we didn't meet since the last meeting. We're going to meet next week and scheduled next uh, Wednesday. Next week. Uh, yes, Wednesday. Do you want to know that we do have the boys' baseball team and girls' softball team in the semifinals for the counties? Scheduled to play tomorrow. All right. Good <coughs> evening. Is that your report, Mr. Miller? <laughs> Any questions for Mr. Miller by the board? How about by public? Should I? <laughs> Seeing none, facilities? Um. <clears throat> is, is there really anything to this soccer thing, for real? 
I'm just asking because I didn't get an answer last time. I just thought it was, if it's just a coincidence. Not that I'm aware of. I, 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 it's, I yeah, it's there's nothing I'm aware of other than just resignations okay. of uh, coaches. Okay. Yeah, it was nothing. It was, it was nothing that brought to my attention. It's struggling. It's not a surprise. Yeah, it was nothing that brought to my attention. All right, uh, facilities. I think Mr. Dursa is not here. Um, <clears throat> Casey's not here, so we'll, we'll skip. Uh, finance, Mr. Wolf. Yes, Mr. Scott. Um, we did meet on May 2nd to review the budget. Um, you know, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty stable now, except for one piece uh, is the uh, uh, building the grounds which I think is due what, two days from now, what is that? So that, I know the Saints has a uh, figure in there to address it, but uh, that, as far as I know, this is saying it correctly, I think that's the last move larger moving piece that we have. So um, this uh, hangs also when we um, sent out to everybody, you know, the value of the mill, all the tax information and where we are with that. So. Uh, be good to have on hand for our meeting in June, because so, that's when we'll have to make our final decision. So, so I'm not sure we'll have a meeting in uh, June or not. Um, possibly just to review a quick one, but review the uh, results of the uh, uh, grounds. Um, and I think the snow we will have a separate piece for later in the fall. Right. So, so. Yeah. I, so. Mr. Durso wasn't here, but um, Dr. Cooper reminded the we have the RFP coming. It'll we'll be open on um, this Wednesday, the 15th, when we'll be opening up the, the bids for those. Okay. So I also believe we're getting the RFP information sent to us from CEC or AIC. I'm sorry, for our yes. for PEC. Right. <clears throat> Any other uh, questions for Mr. Wolf on finance? Any public comment on finance? All right. Uh, policy review. So um, the last meeting we uh, for we we didn't have the meeting. Excuse me, um, because we were meeting about the uh, cleaning company and the maintenance company. So we didn't have a meeting. So our next meeting will be May twentieth, um, and we'll get we'll have a new agenda. We're, I think we're meeting next, it's next, you know, next week, next week. So that's all I have. All right. <clears throat> Any board comment from Mr. Scott? Any public comment? All right. Technology. <clears throat> we met on May 2nd, um, <clears throat> and we reviewed um, the 2019-20 budget update, um, which you see portions of it in here by piecing the equipment that needs replacement instead of purchasing it, having more um, up and down with our budget numbers is going to help try and streamline sort of predictable um, technology expense uh, there. And step, I guess this is the first step, was um, to see the $59,000 in there in this current um, this next voting committee. Um, telecommunications provider update, um, it's almost done, they're wait waiting Proposal. So I believe Irishman already sent one in, and the next one was, I think it was Lido. Lido, yep, Lido. Um, the um, my learning plan, frontline education platform, you can see in the budget today. And, um, Mr. Mattis explained that um, better than I could, for sure. <laughs> um, the web hosting, um, the status, we got an update on that. Um, uh, everything's in process. Um, Next this week, I believe they were doing a design template, and it'll be an August rollout. Um, the high school student collection and distribution for the iPads was discussed, and they were laying out the plan um, to bring them in, and they were preparing the um, middle school facility iPads at that week, um, at the time of that meeting in the coming week. Um, the digital document storage. Um, came in at budget. Um, <clears throat> there was some concern that it might come in over budget. They were the original proposal was higher then, uh, but it came in at the uh, at the exact number that Scott was hoping for, forty thousand. And then um, last, uh, we talked about the student information migration to infinite from infinite 
Infinite Campus was chosen, and they were looking for approval in this um, August meeting coming up um, for participation. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Strobel? Well, it might be a permission to ask, but we'll... <laughs> uh, email migration, when, when's that occurring again? Over the summer, um, so over the specifically mid-June, um, as soon as the faculty is out. Okay. And I don't know, maybe this is more of a, a, a word question, but do anybody consider having like a year-end recap for how the iPad, you know, went this year and maybe recommendations or you know, kind of recap to see how, how things went? He has had a, a curriculum thing or a technology thing or a both thing. Combo. Feels like a combo thing. Yeah, we could certainly put something together for uh, June. If you want to pay for something. <laughs> Me? Yeah. <laughs> I said. Well, so Mr. Rathke had a, a good idea about. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait, write that down. Not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop there. Send it to the I want to make sure right. that's in the minutes because it doesn't happen that often. Obviously, that's why I missed it. She's writing it in the minutes. Put it right underneath Mr. Rathcat and the question. That happens a lot. So it was, you know, let's, can we have a recap of how everything went with the first full year of iPad integration? So from a a technology and a curriculum if perspective. If Dr. Cooper and Mr. McKnight will check the, check the, the previous emails from the last two weeks, I asked you the same. I, we, we decided to do that in June. In June? Right, remember? Is that a curriculum or is technology or is it curriculum? I mean, I, 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 but I think technology needs to do needs to do the same thing. We can approach it from two different directions. We, we can do something from a technology standpoint. That's um, Scott. Pull some information together, and then we'll do something. With something yeah, I mean, I think they're yep. both yeah, aspects are obviously important. Very so. positive. So, like, very positive. Yeah, I, I think it took a little bit of adjustment period, but I think overall it's really nice when you can hand in an assignment at eleven fifty nine instead of three p.m. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of that. That's yeah, good. yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> I have a question about the electronic payment system. Are we using the new system now? I don't know. Last I heard it was ready. So it's yeah, we used it for uh, AP exam collection, and we'll be ramping up to using the uh, iPad insurance collection um, over the summer. Did you use it for prom this year? We did not use it for prom. Oh, you had to do something different with that. All right. So that's an affirmative on this, the uh, the summary. I think we're done. And we're good there. And uh, yeah. No. <laughs> Um, all right, great. Any uh, any public comment on technology? Transportation. Did you have anything? Okay. No. Okay. Um, old business. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Any public comment on transportation? I have no question. Thank you, Mr. Rathbun. <laughs> old, old business. <clears throat> any board comment on the motion or on the uh, the meeting minutes? Any public comment? All right, new business. So we have a, a little matter of a new school board treasurer. Very solid. It's a very coveted, important, critical position well, I, I to say, the well, district. Why, why rock the boat? You know, it's going good. I, I always say, don't, don't why fix it if it ain't broke? <laughs> Says the two guys that are leaving. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, between now and next week, we'll have to. I don't care. All right. Um, any other questions from the board or comment regarding new business items? Any public comment under new business items? Okay. Any public presentations on any items whatsoever? Do we have a motion to adjourn? I move. Second.